right. Well, now I'm going to talk about Biden's proposed hot plan and what we think might happen. I want to preface this that we don't know for sure. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what the tax.org, uh, the people who analyze across the nation, what these proposals look like, what they may be. Um, but generally speaking, my real expectation is that Biden's first order of business is not going to be to increase taxes immediately. That I, I really don't see that being his proposed agenda, at least in the first year. I could be wrong. Um, I have definitely been wrong before, but just looking at everything he has on his plate and that um, amount of time and intensity that goes into creating um, these additional strategies, um, I believe that we may have a year or two, but this is the perfect time if you are, um, if you don't have a CPA that you're working with or you don't work with them that often is to start making that relationship stronger so that they think of you and they start talking to you about the proposed changes. It's also important to read yourself, keep up to date on what you can be aware of that's coming down because every day that you're out, you know, strategizing and building relationships and understanding what's coming down, then you can make informed business decisions as well. So here's just an overview of what we expect for Biden in general areas. So we expect that um, there's probably hardly any non-guarantee that the corporate tax rate is going to go up to 28%. So we're going to have a lot of people who decided to switch to an S corp or a C corp because they had the 21% flat tax that may start looking to go back again into other other entity types, especially when you start looking at the franchise and excise tax in Tennessee, um, it, you, you really need to mitigate what makes sense um, in those areas. So it is going to establish a corporate minimum tax on book income. Right now, I believe that threshold is about over 10 million. Um, so basically, it's going to require like an alternative minimum tax that you're going to pay a minimum tax no matter how many deductions that you have. Um, it's going to increase the maximum tax rate, which this is really important for all of you as you're kind of thinking through, do I want to sell a property this year or next year? Um, or do I want to um, cash out on any investment? Your maximum rate is 37% and it will go up likely to, to a maximum rate of 39.6% for those earning more than $400,000. So. It's unclear right now if that's just going to be per individual or per family or both. They have not clarified that in the guidance. Um, there's still a lot of information and ambiguity until we see a true strategy in place. Um, also, with in addition to increasing the highest tax break, Biden also has proposed additional Social Security taxes on those who are earning more than $400,000. And this is one of my least favorites because it's been one of the best tax planning strategies that we've been able to utilize in the past where we'll pay, we'll put a husband and wife and we'll only pay the husband um, because the wife may be involved, but not really as involved. So we'll pay her the least amount possible and we would hit the threshold so that there was no longer any social security tax. They would only be paying the Medicare tax. So that was a huge um, tax opportunity. It, it kind of narrows the opportunity a little bit, but I still think we've got some pretty good opportunity to leverage it um, because right now it looks like with the 137. Um, so currently Social Security is imposed on the first 137,000. So anything past 137,000, you were only taxed at. Um, you had 6.2% so of that just not taxed at all on both sides, the employer and the employee side. And the remaining was not subject to social security tax. But now, if it goes the direction we think where it's gonna go, you will have that same opportunity, but the cutoff is at $400,000. So basically between 137 dollars and $400,000, you wouldn't pay additional social security or via social security tax, you'd only pay the Medicare tax. But if you made over 400, then you were back to where you were before. So it's gonna, it's gonna decrease the opportunity a little bit there, but definitely work with your CPA to make sure that you stay in that threshold, that sweet spot if that does pass, um, because that will save you quite a bit of tax in the long run. 
Um, under the proposed tax plan, Biden also seeks uh, to increase long-term capital gain and qualified dividend rates. We don't know exactly what that's gonna be, but we know currently that, as we all know, the maximum rate for um, capital gains is 20%, and that's what we all wanna be in, is that 20%, like where we can get that lovely 20%, and an, a 3.8% net investment income tax. Under Biden's plan, that would increase your maximum rate on long-term capital gains and dividends to 39.6. So that's a big jump. Um, so as you're kind of thinking through the next year and you want to start thinking about mitigating tax, this is an area um, of, of special interest. Um, I just want to give you a heads up. You have about um, three to four minutes. To... Okay. 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 Perfect. Right. So proposed change to QBI. Um, this is a very important component I just wanted to pass along to everybody. Under Biden's proposed plan, the deduction would be phased out for taxpayers with income in excess of $400,000. So the QBI was that qualified business income deduction, which basically gave um, LLCs, S-Corps, um, anyone who wasn't a C-Corp an extra tax advantage. And it was great for real estate because you got an extra 20% in tax savings. Under the current plan, that, that QBI for specifically real estate rental activities is going to be eliminated it like. So the net effect of that, if you're just looking at net effect, it would be a 29, it would be an effective rate of 29 to as high as 39.6%. So that's a pretty big jump specifically for the real estate. Um, itemized deductions, there is gonna be a phase out on those coming if he does um, utilize that piece, but he's, He's basically wanting to cap the itemized deductions at 28% for those making over $400,000. And just to hit on like kind exchange, I think this is the most important part of the presentation. Biden, as um, McKee was talking about, Biden is very interested in getting rid of the like kind exchange. It has been a great opportunity for investors to sell a property, utilize a 1031 exchange company. Um, and then invest in another property and basically pass that income down the line. Um, with the current Biden's current plan, this is one of his number one topics. It seems like that he really wants to eliminate uh, the 1031 exchange. They've already eliminated it for vehicles. Um, so in the past, you've been able to buy a new vehicle and there's a 1031 exchange that no longer that hasn't existed for a while. Um, but now they believe it's going to go away for real estate as well. Um, another area is they want to end up the step up in basis for beneficiaries. Um, inherited assets sold by the beneficiary basically would generate capital gains at the original asset cost. Um, so that's that's something if I were in looking at, if I were in the position where um, I was thinking about retirement and um, inheritance, you need to start speaking to someone soon um, because you need to look at how you can best strategize um, if the step up in basis does go away because that's been such a huge opportunity to pass along appreciated property um, to family members down the line. And, and this is going to alleviate some of the advantages. It's still going, you're still gonna get some benefit, but it's not gonna be nearly as, as beneficial. And then um, the estate, so, the annual gift exclusion for, for 2021 stays at 15,000, uh, which means that you can give $15,000 tax-free without filing a tax return to any of your kids, your spouses, your grandkids, um, and there's no federal gift tax consequences. A husband and wife can make $15,000 gifts each, uh, doubling the impact, and separately, you can make unlimited direct payments for any medical and tuition expenses. So what that basically means is you can give your child $15,000 and then you can also directly pay their, their, their tuition and medical expenses and that's that you don't have to file a gift tax return. So Biden has proposed restoring the estate and gift taxes to the 2009 levels, which means that would be 3.5 million per person and you would have to pay an estate tax or 1 million for the gift tax and a top rate of 45%, which is a big jump from, from where it is currently. 
Uh, final key, if you ever, if you want to look more at what's going on in, in the current law, there's a taxfoundation.org has some great information. Um, opportunity zones is really another area of opportunity. Um, I don't see opportunity zones going away. Um, opportunity zones is, is a way for, to, to um, ensure clear economic and environmental benefits to a specific area. And there are lots of properties that do uh, meet the opportunity zone qualifications. Um, so I think that, that this area is still going to be a hot area that people are going to be taking advantage of over the next um, few years at, as a way to mitigate tax into the future. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and um, if I can ever be of assistance, uh, my info here is info at MassCPA, and always happy to assist with anything you may need.